Hey everybody, thank you for joining us here at MSCRMadons.com. Uh, today basically what we're going to be doing here is this is going to be the first webinar in our, uh, to, uh, for, for 2015. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing series. We'll probably do another one of these webinars uh, about once every month. Um, basically today what we're going to do is uh, kind of a solution overview. And uh, I want to show the value basically and give just kind of a quick demo about how most uh, how some of these add-ons that we have work. Um, at the end of the session, I'm going to do a, a brief Q&A um, to get your questions in. Uh, you can type those in the chat. Uh, feel free to do that during the, um, the actual webinar itself. Do have a support team in there that's going to be actually answering some of those questions for you immediately in the chat. So use the chat function that's down there in your lower left-hand corner of the screen. Um, so, uh, that being said, uh, my name is Clint Higley, and we're going to roll right into this. All right, so the first add-on that we're going to cover today is Documents Core Pack, and I know a lot of you guys are familiar with that. Uh, for those who are not, what is Documents Core Pack? It's a unified document solution that allows you to create, uh, process, and automate document creation from, uh, from data inside of CRM. So, it's simplified generation and processing of documents based on CRM data. What is the major value of this? Well, it, it speeds up document-related business operations, um, such as your reporting, accounting. You can do quotes and invoices with it, um, mailing and printing, and um, you can do document automation with it. So if you want no inter user interaction whatsoever, you can do that with the CRM processes, uh, such as workflows and dialogues. All the templates are based out of MS Word, which is uh, it's basically got simple, <laughs> simple template design. So um, in order to create these templates, uh, it's relatively easy to do. If you want to do reporting with it, you don't need any SSRS knowledge. Um, so you can create your reports actually with Documents Core Pack as well. Um, it also supports custom entities and attributes and uh, multiple relation support. Okay? So you can do uh, one-to-many, many-to-many uh, relationships, add those in there. Uh, you can also do calculations, QR codes, dynamic pictures, hyperlinks. The uh, list kind of goes on and on. So for this, what are some uh, typical application scenarios? Uh, now you can see that here this is a big one. Um, so basically uh, the major thing here is the, uh, the lead to close process here. Um, all the way from you know, getting that new lead, sending out personalized info with flyers and brochures, uh, sending out contracts, uh, NDAs, um, getting the close on it, sending out quotes and proposals, and once you win the deal, you can send out an invoice, your orders, payment shipping confirmations. Um, some other things that you can do, marketing using for marketing as well, personalized campaigns with it, get flyers and brochures, um, and rich personalized emails to your to your users. Um, so for your service, you can do service reports, contracts, anything that you uh, Anything pretty much that you can think of, you can do, um, as well as anything custom. Anything you want to do with custom entities. Um, lots of unusual stuff as well, such as portal integration for this, um, and customizations as well. So I just want to kind of go through real quick and show you just a quick demo of how easy it is to kind of uh, get this up and going and, and create a document and have, have it be emailed. Um, basically, uh, one of the ways that we do this is several different ways, but I think the easiest and, uh, way to show this is basically using our Create Document button. Uh, so I've got here a quote, and um, I want to create a document, create a quote document, and send this email out to a customer. So I'll go ahead and hit my Create Document button. Um, that brings up our Documents Core Pack dialog. Uh, here, just to kind of show you the entire process, I'm going to go ahead and let uh, and just decide every step. So I'll go ahead and click that button. Uh, what happens is now um, all my templates are loaded up. Uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of templates in here. A lot of people do have a ton of templates. You can use the search function, or you can just uh, use the different tabs to get to the, docu uh, to get to the templates that you need. Uh, but I'm going to go here with uh, quote English nice. Uh, go ahead and select my template. Go ahead and hit the next button. Read some information out. And uh, then I have a few settings that I can pick from. Uh, I can attach the document either as a note, uh, email content, or as a letter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick with email attachment though. Um, and uh, then I get to choose my file type. So we have several different ones that you can choose from. Uh, PDF usually on this being the standard. 
Um, if I want to, uh, if I don't want to review the mail um, after I've created this, I can go ahead and automatically send this email out. Um, I can set my recipients for this uh, just from the drop-down here. And um, I can go ahead and uh, add an email template to that as well. So you can, all the email templates that you have stored inside of CRM, you can select them from here. And, uh, and, and you know, it will go ahead and be pasted right into that email. Another nice feature is being able to print this document if I wanted to and uh, save it to SharePoint. Okay? So those are several different things, options that I can choose from. After I'm done setting my options, I'll go ahead and click the Next button. And now starts the document creation process. <laughs> happened pretty quick, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you anyway. Uh, what basically happened was uh, on the server, they grabbed the template, it merged the document, it converted that to a PDF, and then it went ahead and presented it here to me for a preview. Um, I can go ahead and open that up and uh, take a look at my created document here. Uh, make sure everything is good. I'll go ahead and close that down. And uh, then to finish up the whole process, I'll go ahead and hit Finish. And what that's going to do for me is go ahead and bring up that email that I wanted it to create uh, with my uh, email template right in here. I've got my uh, attached document right here. And I've also added a product catalog to this so I can go ahead and send it on. And you can see everything's already set in there. So all I have to do is if I want to add a few more things, I can add it in there. Um, go ahead and hit Send. Uh, that's how simple it is to, to do all this. I mean, it, you, it takes little time. I mean, uh, one other thing though is uh, I do want to go ahead and point out if you want to, um, you can basically kind of automate this process a little bit more with the Documents Quarter Pack dialog where you automatically choose, like for example, say the template that you want to use or whether or not you want to save it to SharePoint or not. Um, so for example, here on this last one, I'll, just to show you the little difference in the last one, I decided every step. This one, I'm going to generate a quote as a PDF and attach it to a new email. Uh, so I'll go ahead and select that. And as you can see, I have less options in here to choose from. Uh, basically, I have my recipients and uh, you know, my email template and whether or not I want to print this document. So the Save to SharePoint, uh, you know, what I want to do with it as if I want to save it as a PDF, all that has already been pre-selected for me using that, using that button. Um, after that's done, go ahead and click Next. Again, it goes through the document creation process. Um, saves that right into, um, right into, uh, right into SharePoint. Um, and then I have uh, my, my finished document there. It's going to go ahead and open up that email again with all the information in it and everything attached. Um, so you can let your users basically have as much freedom as they want or as little as you, you kind of want them to. Um, it's really nice. Uh, you, have a, you have a lot of options with that Create Document functionality. Uh, want to move on here to the, uh, the next add-on here. Uh, the next add-on that we're going to talk about here is Telephone Integration Add-on. Um, and basically what this does is it connects your phone system to Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Uh, basically what our add-on does is it acts kind of as a middleman and makes these, uh, these things communicate with each other. So CRM and our telephone integration add-on, you can use uh, a lot of the major, um, we support a lot of the major phone systems here. Uh, also Skype link, Ring Central, uh, Interactive Intelligence, and we have an SDK um, if your uh, if your uh, VoIP system is not supported. We have an SDK that you can develop. Um, your own hooks into our, into our tool. So what's the value of this? It uh, basically captures uh, phone calls, so incoming and outgoing. Um, it creates phone call activities automatically for you on the fly. Um, and you know who's calling. Okay? So it functions kind of also as a caller ID. It looks that information up out of CRM. Um, it has simplified dialing, so click to dial out of records. Um, uh, also has a power dialing via power dialing list. Um, that's something that I'm going to go over and show you. So, um, the other thing that it does have is call statistics and call, call analysis. We've kind of created a dashboard for you that you can go in, take a look at uh, all the activity that's been going on with, uh, with the phone calls and see uh, reporting and things of that nature. Um, so how does it work? Uh, basically, we've got uh, two parts of it, the TI server and the TI client. Uh, basically, what the TI server is, is it's the CRM solutions. Um, it handles the click to dial functionality inside of CRM. Um, also handles call statistics and call analysis, which you can see here. There's a little snippet of our dashboard here, um, the, the, the different things that we can show with that. 
the TI client basically is a bridge between the phone and CRM on the user's PC. So anyone using this, uh, this, this will have the TI client installed on their system. Uh, basically, it's used to perform calls and react on incoming calls. Uh, some CRM specific operations that you can do straight out of the balloon is you can create records. Um, you can use an integrated CRM search uh, and a whole host of other things that you can do. Um, this also hosts a power dialing list, like say for example your inside sales or telemarketing team. Um, just to quickly flip over here to the demo system and show you a few things. Now basically here the client, it lives right down here. Uh, so this is our telephone integration client. Uh, the one thing that I did want to go ahead and show though, first of all, is how easy it is to just dial straight from a record. So if I'm on this uh, contact record, I want to place a phone call to this person. Basically all I need to do is go down here to our click to dial button. Uh, this is a two-part button, so I'm able to actually go in here and pick and choose uh, the phone number that I want to go ahead and dial. Uh, so here I'm going to call Michael up on his business phone. Uh, I'll go ahead and click that. and. TI balloon pops up. Um, it's dialing out right now. It's dialing the number. Once the call is activated then, it generates that new phone call activity for me. Um, so uh, I can talk about, uh, I can put my information in here. So, And uh, anything that we talked about. So, All right, great. Once I go ahead and mark that complete, uh, that is actually saved back to uh, my user's um, um, activities as a, as a phone call activity. So that's all stored in CRM. So it's really easy for your users that, that nice little pop up there is a nice prompt reminder that, hey, um, I need to enter in this, in this information in and store that thing inside of CRM. Um, so it's, it's really great. I uh, just want to go ahead and show a Brief example, I mean, I know some of you have maybe in the past worked with telephone integration before um, and worked with uh, uh, the, uh, the basically the auto dialer, the power dialer. Um, before basically what we had to do was uh, create these two campaigns and campaign activities. Uh, now the process has gotten a whole lot easier to create, uh, create one. So I'll go ahead and show you this. I'm going to go over here to a list of my accounts and let's say uh, I want to have a spring promo and I want to go ahead and, and do this with all my key accounts. So I'll go ahead and bring up my key accounts here. Um, I'll go ahead and select all of them. All right. And then I'll come up here and uh, go here to my create dialing list. Uh, once I do that, go ahead and click it. Uh, then this is the, the dialog here that allows you to create these, uh, these power dialing lists. So I'll go ahead and enter in my, uh, my subject here. So my subject is spring promo. Okay, and I can give it a brief description if I want to. Uh, the nice part about this is I can create a new power dialing list, which I am going to do that here, or I can add this to an existing power dialing list. So I can kind of create a power dialing list, and then you know, as the day goes on, I can keep adding to it as things come in. So um, I'll go ahead and create new. All right, and it just takes a second for it to create that list, and uh, brings me up my new power dialing list. So I'll go ahead and give this thing a name. So, all right, great, and um, assign an owner. So basically now what I can do is I can actually assign this to users or say like a team of users. Um, let's see here, I can add you know, kind of whoever I want to here. Uh, let's see, let's add. So I'll add this team, the standard team. Um, I can actually set my uh, pre-processing and post-processing times right from here and give this a description. Okay, great. So what I've got here is I've got my description in. Uh, I've got the, the team that I want to be working on this call. I've got my list of calls down here at the bottom. Everything's set up, ready to go. All I need to do here. Um, is activate this process, activate this list, and then that is going to basically be published uh, to all the people's um, uh, TI client. Um, so just to kind of speed things up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and go in here and do my telephone integration client. Oops. Let's see, I have to right click it and go to power dialing lists. So I've got uh, my power dialing list in here. I have one assigned to me. Let me hit the refresh button here real quick. And there we go. There my list pops up. I've got my spring promo. 
uh, gives me a little bit of details about uh, these calling lists here. So I'll just go ahead and fire it up, start it up. Um, so basically now uh, I'm, I'm inside the power dialer. Um, I've got my, uh, my pre-processing time here. And um, in order to, uh, to make the phone call, all I have to do is uh, go ahead. I actually picked the wrong one. So let's see here. I put a phone number in the sky. And there we go. So, but basically what this allows me to do is it allows me to go through this and make several, uh, several phone calls very quickly and easily um, just, by, uh, just by go ahead and hitting the dial button. It dials all that information out. I can still move around inside of CRM, um, check things out, automatically get back to the call that I'm working on and see things. And then you know, hit the dial button dial it out, have a conversation with the person. And uh, then let's see, after I'm done talking to them, entering my information in here, I can go ahead and hang up that phone call, and uh, market has either failed, success, or rescheduled. Uh, the reschedule process is really nice because if I don't reach someone, um, I can actually reschedule the call for another time that would be good to reach that person. So I'll go ahead and save that. So as you can see here, it just moves right on to the next phone call. So it's a really, really easy way to quickly go through a lot of phone calls. Um, all right, great. So I'll go ahead and shut this down real quick and detach from that list. Uh, the one other thing that I want to show real quick is just a kind of an overview. Um, let's see here. Just a quick overview here. Um, of what the telephone integration overview looks like here. So basically, as you can see here, I can come in here and I can see all kinds of statistics, statistics or anything like that that, I, that, I, that I'm interested in that I need to see, such as uh, incoming versus outgoing calls, uh, how many calls were connected, how many calls were answered, etc. So you can customize this in any way that you see fit in order to, uh, to get that information that you need to see. Like say for example, if you're looking for a certain user, what they've done, where they've been calling out of, things of that nature, um, you can pull that up right in here. Alright, so moving on to the next um, add-on. Uh, the next add-on is Group Calendar. Um, it's basically a simple scheduling tool for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Um, it covers users, facilities, teams, and resources. Um, it's, just a, a, it's just a whole better calendar than what's in there in, in, in Dynamics CRM right now. What's the value of it? It gives you effective team scheduling. Um, you can get an overview of your team schedule or individual user schedule or a resources schedule. Um, and you can see all availabilities of users and resources right there at one glance from the calendar itself. Um, we have several different views for this. Um, the Gantt top-down agenda, so any way that you want to kind of look at this data, you can customize your calendar to see that. Um, and uh, each individual view gives like different things that you can actually look at, uh, different options that you can do, such as drag and drop, things of that nature. So it's scheduling really made easy. It allows you to avoid conflicts uh, by highlighting over, uh, um, overlapping, say, meetings or activities. Uh, the drag and drop rescheduling. Um, you can see work hours so, and people's time off right from the calendar. Color coding, which is really important, helps you see everything at a glance. Uh, assigning of unscheduled activities and appointments, and a lot of other stuff. Um, how it basically works. It's a web resource that can be added to nav bar, dashboards, or embedded actually into entity forms. So uh, you can kind of put this anywhere that you want to. Um, one of the main features here is that, like I said before, you can, you can define like an advanced find. Um, to, for, say, for example, here we've done all users. You can see your teams straight out of there, all their calendars, resources, users, and facilities and equipment, all within this really quick view. Okay. Easiest way to kind of uh, grasp all that is to go ahead and see it. So I'll go ahead and pull the calendar up. You can see here I've got a um, – I'm right here in the Gantt view, in the Gantt week view. I've got a lot of things going on up here. Um, so let's say, for example, that I want to see just the calendar of, of Michael Dorr. I can go ahead straight here from the drop-down, go down here, select Michael Dorr, and, uh, and just pull up his calendar, his particular view. 
um, can I open all these up and see that he's got maybe some uh, let's see here he's got some some issues here uh, with a couple of meetings and things that, of that nature so let's go ahead we'll go back and what we can do so we can just open this up and we can assign this to someone else so I can see that Christian doesn't have anything here going on at that time so I'll go ahead and drop that in on his location okay and then that is actually assigned to him so no having to go into the the, the appointment and change things around. You can do it all straight from the calendar. Um, so it's really easy to, to do that. Again, you can, you, can, you can change colors of things. Um, it's really nice and simple to do. So I'll change this basically, say to yellow. So you can define basically all your own color schemes for the different things that you want. Go ahead and refresh that calendar. And as you can see, it's, uh, I've, I've changed the color on it. Um, one other thing that's really nice is say, for example, that uh, you've got a lot of scheduling that you're, that you're having to do for different people. Um, you don't know who's going to be going where, so you can actually schedule these, act, uh, these activities and not assign them to anyone. Okay? So I have here some appointments and some service activities and things that I need to go ahead and assign. Uh, so for example, uh, let's see, I've got a workshop here that I need to go ahead and assign. I just drag it right on down and drop it right into the calendar. It assigns that to that person. There's nothing that I need to do. Move on to my next assignment. Say, for example, this doesn't end up working out. I need to unassign it. I just drag it right back up and unschedule it. Uh, uh, so I can schedule these things any way that I want to drop it into their calendars. The Gantt view is one of the major views that a lot of people work out of. Um, the other one that, that I do like to show a lot, um, it's actually my favorite view and the one that I end up working out of a lot, um, is the top-down view. And you can see why. So this is the top-down week view. Um, I have across the top, I have basically all of my users here. Um, I can whip through and see their calendar for the entire week. Um, and uh, then, for example, here, like I can, I can also do dragging and dropping in here as well of, um, of the activities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I can actually extend, move things around. Uh, so it's, it's actually it's a pretty powerful tool and to me probably one of the most powerful views. Most of the reason why is I can actually block things off and schedule new appointments right out of here. Um, that's basically what a lot of people are going to be finding uh, to use. Of course, naturally, there are a few other views. Like say, for example, like the agenda view. It's just basically like a real pretty view that you can see kind of what's going on for the particular day. You see your resource right here, and you see exactly what they're doing in a nice view. Um, same for the list. Uh, uh, the list and uh, the, the timeline view. So you've got a lot to choose from, and it's totally customizable for your individual needs. All right. So moving on to attachment extractor. Um, attachment extractor, there, there is no basic demo for this. It's basically uh, one of those things that you cannot demo, uh, but um, I'll just explain to you how it basically works. Basically what it does is it replicates or move atta moves attachments from MSCRM to Microsoft SharePoint or a file share. Why is that a big deal? So what's the value behind it? Um, basically what it does is it reduces your storage costs. Um, it can shrink down your CRM database up to about 60%. And for our CRM online customers, there is a huge price difference. Um, these numbers are actually from I think September of last year. Um, so you know it was SharePoint was 20 cents a gig a month, and uh, CRM was 9.99 a gig a month. So for example, if you had a uh, 50 gigabyte, you're looking at 6,000 versus 120 dollars. Uh, that's a huge saving. So um, you can actually uh, save yourself a lot of money uh, by using this tool. Um, it can also be used to replicate data, uh, so copying sensitive documents to maybe a safer location, um, and also gives you local avail availability of the files. Um, you can establish a document structure um, within SharePoint with this tool, um, and also you can it's, it's, you can use that to use uh, the Microsoft Search Service or Search Server, um, so you can easily find these documents within Microsoft SharePoint. Um, how it basically works is everything is actually done by a service. This service can actually be running on a local computer or a server or running on a VM in the cloud. Okay? Um, basically what it does is well, I have my Microsoft CRM 
uh, system right up here. Uh, I've got my attachments here, but uh, either to an email or to a note. Um, the service fires off. Uh, looks for new emails and notes every so often. That's a definable thing. I think the default is about 90 seconds. So every 90 seconds, this will fire off and look for those new emails and note attachments. Um, it'll then move or copy that to an alternate storage location. So move it down and copy it either to SharePoint or the file share. Then what it does is it places actual, an actual link um, to the extracted file inside of Microsoft CRM. Um, so if it's an attachment, um, it's actually going to put a link in there to that attachment on SharePoint. So there are no changes here to the CRM UI. Users can access these files as usual from within Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So if I'm a user, I'm going into the email, I need to download this uh, the particular attachment, I just click on it, and then it actually says, uh, it actually gives me the dialog to download that, that file. I, as a user, do not know that this file is actually being stored in SharePoint or onto a file share. I just download it straight from there. Uh, the other thing about it is you can actually revert these extractions if it is necessary. So it's a pretty handy tool. Moving on real quick. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about um, our activity tools. And basically what the activity tools is is advanced activity handling in Microsoft CRM, in the Microsoft CRM web client. Um, I'll just kind of break it down for you a little bit more easy than that. Uh, basically what it, it acts like is it kind of acts like Outlook um, inside of your uh, CRM system. That's one of the major values of it. It also increases productivity by providing tools to handle activities a lot more efficiently. Um, the visualization of it, again, as I said before, it looks like Outlook, as you can see right down in here. Uh, so your users are kind of used to that. Um, you can also do things like you can search through activities or you can group them together in groups. Um, so it makes things easier to find. Uh, there's also several email options that you can use uh, right out of the tool. Uh, if I move over to the demo system here real quick, uh, you can see here I'm on the account for MS CRM add-ons. I've got my activity tools open. Um, the nice part about it is, uh, again, instead of having to kind of go through these and click them and open them up in separate windows, I just can kind of click them and zip right through them, find what I need. Again, we have all our different views right here, and we have the search functionality. Um, I have the ability here basically from an email to directly reply to an email straight out of CRM if I want to. Again, I have all this functionality right there and create new activities again. Um, so it's a pretty handy tool. Um, the one thing that I do think that I need to say here real quick is this, unfortunately, right now at this time is not available for CRM Online. Uh, this tool should be available for CRM Online, I'm thinking, by the end of Q3. So, great. Uh, zip it along. The last tool that we're going to cover today is uh, the Smart Farm. Uh, it, it enhances the CRM user experience. It's basically giving you uh, nav a, a navigation tool, giving you quick access, showing you related records, and one-click actions shows you it does all this stuff. The value of it is it saves time by adding navigation or functional buttons. Um, a lot of y'all, the biggest complaint that we had from a lot of people when they moved from 2011 to 2013 was the navigation in this in CRM 2013 and now in 2015. Uh, it's kind of not good. Um, so we kind of developed this tool to make that a lot easier. So it simplifies navigation between uh, related records. Um, also gives you the option to do personalized menus. Um, it gives you account and quick access of all related records, as you can see kind of over here. Um, so you can access related records and activities quickly. Um, you can see the count of all related entities. So for example, if I'm looking here at this, uh, this screenshot here, I can see really quick that Microsoft, uh, the MSCRMAddons.com, the account, uh, there's 59 activities associated with it. I've got five contacts associated with it, and on and on. Um, some of the one-click actions that we can do, uh, we can fire workflows or JavaScript straight out of the um, straight out of a, a custom button there in um, in the Smart Bar. It allows you to open links, so direct links, um, and access CRM sitemap entries. Um, so it's like I said, really handy. Uh, just to kind of show it off a little bit, as you can see, right here on uh, the MSCRM add-ons account, I've got my Smart Bar right here. Um, 
this button, this, this, uh, this tool is totally customizable, so your users can customize this and dry, drag and drop things any way that they want to. Um, quickly go ahead and move around and get to the things that they need to get to. Um, so let me go back to this. Another thing that we do add is we add our Smart Bar dialog right here at the top. Um, so you can actually access the Smart Bar from any entity inside of CRM. Okay. Uh, just to, this kind of highlights the differences that we have in the two different views that we've got. Uh, we have this as our standard view, and we've got our metro style view. Um, so it's all based on personal preference how you want to set this up. Uh, one of the nice things, one of the nice features is like, for example, if I, I can actually flip over to my contacts really quickly, or I can grab them from a drop down. Um, so really handy, really helps you move around very, very quickly inside of CRM. All right, I want to thank everybody for joining, and I want to uh, ask you to join our upcoming webinars. You can follow the link. Um, some resources, you can find us on the web at www.mscrm-addons.com. Uh, help centers uh, and live chat and support, uh, that's the, the, just hit the support, hit the support page on our website. Um, and don't forget, this is one of the things that a lot of people do. Um, we have a really awesome blog that basically tells you some things that maybe uh, little tricks and tips on how to do things with, say, Documents Core Packet. You know, if you say maybe a little bit lost, uh, you, you need a little bit of help, say, like, for example, adding a table or joining two tables together, etc., in your template. You can find that information on our blog. Just go ahead and hit our blog and do a quick search. Um, again, naturally, of course, you can always ask us, send us an email. Um, contact information, uh, you can contact here, us here in the U.S. Uh, U.S. office is open from the hours of 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time till 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we're open in Europe as well. I uh, would try to give you that information, but I think I would actually get the time references wrong. So I'll hold off on that. You can find that actually out on our website. Um, emails, you can always email us with questions at support at mscrm-addons.com or office at mscrm-addons.com. Other thing that I want to point out is we will be putting these slides up online, and I am actually recording this webinar, so if you want to go back and review some information that's in here, uh, you're more than welcome to. So again, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to open this up uh, for a brief QA and uh, see if anybody's got any questions, and I'll try to answer them right now. Uh, one other thing that I want to quickly remind you of, if you guys are going to be in Atlanta for Convergence next week, uh, please stop by our booth. Um, I'll be there. Um, you can actually see me in person. <laughs> Not like I'm a rock star or anything like that, but I, I got a question here. Does Microsoft support CRM with your solutions in it? Uh, yes, they do. They totally do. We are actually a Microsoft Gold partner. And uh, yeah, so they totally do. You're welcome. Yep. Now let's see. So can you add rules to the attachment structure so that if the regarding has a doc location on SharePoint, it will go? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We have uh, developed a, uh, basically a syntax that will allow you to do things of that nature. Um, so you can kind of create, using the syntax, uh, you can kind of create any kind of folder structure that you want to in SharePoint or actually use the actual document locations. Do we actually host it? No, we do not actually host the service ourselves. I, I was assuming that you were talking attachment extractor because that was the last question. 
Oh, we can't. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, the, I just I stand corrected. We uh, we can actually provide hosting for um, for an attachment extractor if needed. So, um, the other things that we host right now for our CRM online clients are, for example, like Group Calendar. Um, we we do host that for them. Um, also, uh, Documents Core Pack. Um, the Documents Core Pack solution. Um, that is actually uh, for our CRM online customers. They actually have an easier install than I think our on-premise customers. Um, it's almost like a one-two click, enter some information, and you're done, and you're set up and good to go. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, Dean, that's a great question. Um, it, are they compatible with the CRM uh, app on a tablet or mouse? Um, I don't think there's some of them that we have tested with it, and some of them that we haven't. And and some of the things function, and some uh, and some don't. I mean, if you want to get together with me and discuss specifically about what you're looking to do, um, I can definitely look at that. If I have to ask anybody any questions or anything like that, if that'll possibly work, uh, we can get together. I can get together with them and discuss that. It's no problems. <clears throat> 